Hello again YouTubers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm your host, the Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to play Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Now, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, this uh, edition of which was put out by Yastari Games, and this game, uh, also uh, by Asmodee Games, let me show you that there, uh, this game is for one to eight players. It is for ages 13 and up, and it is listed as a 60 to 120 minute game. So let's start there. Now, it says one to eight players because generally speaking, the normal way to play this game is as a cooperative game. And that being, you can play it thoroughly one player. And that is correct, that it will work that way. You can play it one player, no problem. The, <clears throat> the competitive version of the game is in there, but it's a little clunkier, and I think this game was really intended to be co-op. That's really where it, it functions best. The ages 13 and up might be a bit low actually for this game. There's a lot of advanced thinking that's required for playing this game properly. I actually would say more like 16 and up. And I'm I'm being serious here. This 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 is not a game for kids. This is not even a game for young teenagers. This this is a game for people who um can can use logic and reasoning, deduction and induction and can really figure out problems in these manners. So so this is not a game for, for younger people. I think the 13 and up is actually an underestimate of how old you should be to play this game. In addition, there is the 60 to 120 minutes. Now, in this regard, they are a liar. They are a bald-faced liar because two hours is the minimum for playing a game of this, and that's a quick game. This is a long game. This game will never take you an hour. It's just not going to happen. And I want to emphasize this because turns in this game take forever. Okay. Now that I've said that, let's open up the box and have a look at the components. And in my opinion, this is where this game shines the most is its components. Now, there's a bit of a component here that's on top, and I have to laugh because Lynn added this to the box. It does not come with the game, but she has a notebook and pencils in the box now. This is actually Lynn's game. Lynn purchased this game over at a friendly local game store by the name of Fair Game, which is in May on Main Street in Downers Grove, Illinois. Now, she was talking to one of the people who worked at the store and described what kind of games she likes to play and they recommended this to her. It was very nice and very helpful. It is a very helpful game store. If you live anywhere near Downers Grove, Illinois, check it out. And Lynn got into this game enough that she has made a notebook dedicated to this game and keeps pencils in the box. Now this is important because I, I think even though it doesn't come with the game, you need to understand that if you're playing this game, you need to take notes. It's very important. Without notes, you're not going to win at this game or even do well. So pencils and the notebook, very important. Now the next bit of, uh, <clears throat> of component are the case files. Now this is case one, the munitions magnate. Now there are many books in here like this, and each one is an adventure, a case to go on to try to solve and find out who done it and why. And inside of here, you have all sorts of references uh, that when you investigate certain areas, you are told to turn to to read what happens and what information you glean from them. Uh, in addition, we have, this is just a colorful little bit of material here. It is a map of Victorian London. Uh, very nice. It has numbers on it so you can see where everything is and see if it makes sense. Uh, if there's time for people to travel from point A to point B, etc. And then the next bit of material you have, and this is just a very fun bit of material, is a newspaper. It's a one-sheet, two-sided newspaper. They each have a date on them, which will correspond to the dates of the particular adventures. You play the adventures in chronological order, and as you do so, you have more and more of these newspapers out, which you can look through to find clues. Um, 
In addition, we have a London directory. Now, the London directory includes all of the numerical slash the alphanumerical references for anyone you might be looking up and where you would turn to in your case log to find them. It also has general references to things like, for instance, in one of the cases it becomes very important because uh, someone who was involved in the murder used a very interesting brand of cigarette that you're not familiar with. And you can look up a tobacconist in here. Then go to the tobacconist and ask him about that cigarette and they'll, they'll give you the information. Here we have the rule book. Now the rules are fairly simple. It, 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 the game just basically has you taking turns and each turn you follow a lead, you talk to a person, you find out all of that information you're going to find from that person and then the next person goes on and the leads can be things that you either garnered from the introduction in the adventure or maybe from reading the newspaper or from previous leads. The rest of the materials in the box here are other adventures as you see, and other newspapers, as you can see. So the game is a series of adventures with their corresponding day's newspaper, and you put the map in the middle of the table, though functionally the map doesn't really do much. It's just, you know, to set the theme, and also sometimes to check if things are near each other, as well as the rule book. And the way the game plays is very simple. I'm not even going to have to cut away to show you. I can just tell you. The way the game plays is everybody takes turns. Everyone gets to follow one lead on their turn. The lead is something that has a, a reference of where to turn to in the particular case book. You start out with, well, I want to talk to this person. You look them up in the phone book, you see where their reference is, you turn to the book, and you read what happens when you go interview that person. Then the next person goes. If they're stuck, if they don't have something they want to investigate, if they don't have a lead to follow, they can start looking in the newspapers. And that becomes more and more complicated as cases go on because you can look in previous newspapers. And every once in a while, there'll be hints hidden in a newspaper from yesterday or last week. It happens. And you move along until you think, as a group, you have all figured out who done it and why. Then when you're ready, you take a quiz. There's a test in the back of each book. It asks you a bunch of questions, some of which will be relevant to the case. Don't worry, I'm going to keep it spoiler free. Some questions will be strange and seem like they're out of left field because they're, they're not really questions about the case, just general questions about how many leads you followed and, and how much attention you've been paying. And then you compare, you get points based on how quickly, how few leads you had to follow to discover everything, and bonus points for how many questions you answered correctly. You compare your score to Sherlock Holmes's. As long as you solve the case, you can sort of consider yourself a winner, but the real being a winner is if you have more points than Holmes, which is very difficult. That is not an easy thing to accomplish. So that's how you play the game. There, I don't have to show you any moving around on a board because there is no board with this game. This is kind of like a story, a cooperative storytelling game. It's, it's not really a board game. It's, it's, it's not a card game. It's, it's, it's this interesting kind of cooperative story game. And I mean, it's, it's very thematic and it's very into the Sherlock Holmes universe. And this is a game that originally came out way back in the early 80s and has been through a number of incarnations. But I had never played. I had never played this until very recently when Lynn decided to pick it up over at Fair Game. So, how does this game feel? Okay, now, I understand, before I get into this, that I'm in the minority opinion on this. The average rating on Board Game Geek is almost 8 stars out of a lot of ratings. So there are a lot of people out there who really, really like this game. I don't. However, Lynn does. So I'm going to tell you what I think is wrong with the game and why I don't like it. I'm going to give you my rating, but then because I can't recommend this game to you because I actually do not like this game, Lynn is going to recommend this game to you. She's going to tell you why she likes it and why she recommends it to you. So here we go. So now first off, here are my problems with it. One, 
the turns can take way too long. A lot of times someone else does what you were thinking of doing. So you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to talk to the gun shop seller because he seems like who I want to talk to. And the person before you does that. And then you're like, oh, darn. What do I do now? Oh, well, I can look in the newspaper. <clears throat> Not relevant. Not relevant. <clears throat> Is everybody else okay? Does anyone want me to get you a beverage? Something to eat? Something to snack on? I'm, I'm, I might take a while for my turn. Okay? I'm not relevant. Not relevant. Oh, there we go! And it can take a while sometimes for you to find something like that. It can help if on other people's turns you read the newspaper, but once on someone else's turn, because it's, it, you do want to pay attention to the clues they got, they gather. If they've gone on a a, um, a, if they've had a choice and they've turned to that number in the book and they're reading it aloud, you are not going to want to be reading. You're going to want to stop and pay close attention because sometimes really tiny details can be very important to figuring out who done it, which is the most important thing in this game. Another problem I have with this game is the the method of scoring at the end um you take a test and it feels like taking a test and once in a while you get questions that the answers to which would have been from leads no one ever followed and you suddenly feel like crap i didn't study enough for my test and that's not a feeling i like to have when i'm having a game night i like to to feel like I'm playing a game, not like I'm back in high school uh, taking a exam that I didn't study for. So I don't like that feeling. I don't enjoy that part of the game at all. Another problem I have with this game, and I, I, I do have a few problems with this game as, as you are seeing here, but another problem I have with this game is how fleshed out everything is. When we played the first adventure of this game, we followed a red herring lead. It was not uh, the real person who had done the murder, but it was someone else who had means, motive, and opportunity. And they really seemed like they had done it. And we followed three leads, all fully fleshed out, all pointing to them having done it. And then we got to the test, and we took it, and we're like, oh, we were totally wrong. You know... I understand red herring leads can be fun, but I don't think they should have done so many of them for the same red herring. One, and then no more, so you, so you don't spend your whole time being sidetracked on them, I think would have been better. Some of these are too well fleshed out, and you can wind up being so wrong. And then at the end, you feel like you invested all that time and emotion, and you are completely freaking off. And, and that's very disappointing. It feels like you have your heart ripped out. And I didn't like that at all after playing the first game of this. Now, that being said, so what, uh, what does work about this game? Wow. The people who made this game put a lot of effort into it. There's a lot of material here. They made all these books. I mean, it's crazy amounts of stuff, and I respect that. The materials, I mean, the newspapers look great. They're really fun. The materials look awesome. There is a lot of work in here. But back to the materials again, then I have another problem with those too. Um, in a real case, you go and you get some basic information from someone, and then you would go and you would check up on their alibi or check up on their story and, and ask someone else some questions. And then you could come back and catch them in a lie. But you can't do that in this game because each person only has one passage for them. So once you've talked to them, that's it. You're done with that person. There's no coming back and catching them in a lie. You just got to sort of go to the end and then see if you were right and you don't even really know 100% that you were right. So it, that is something else that I have an issue with. So yeah, the, the materials are really high quality. There's lots of materials, incredible amounts of work made into this game. But this game is just not for me. Now that doesn't mean it's not for you. If you agree with me, if everything I, I said to you sounds bad, I mean, one of the things about this game is it really feels to me like you're playing, you're you're reading a choose your own adventure novel. If you remember those from the '80s, you're reading a choose your own adventure novel that has a test at the end. And if you didn't take the right paths, you may not be able to answer all the questions on the test. So this doesn't feel fun to me. So 
out of 10 stars, I have to give this only four stars. And I get, I'm giving it four stars on BoardGameGeek.com. And four stars means I don't like it, but maybe I might play it again at some point in the future. And the reason I'm saying that is because Lynn does like it. And she really likes it. And if she really wants me to, at some point in the future, after there's been a long break between the last game and the day she's asking me to play, I might play this game again. It's possible. I don't absolutely despise it. I just don't really enjoy it that much. But Lynn does. So let's hear from her. So Lynn, why do you like this game? <clears throat> I don't get to give a rating. Of course you can give a rating. Well, but I, th I thought you'd want to save that for later. Oh, How many stars are you giving this game? I would give it nine, and that's only because you really can't replay it after you solve a mystery. Otherwise, it would have gotten a ten. Wow. Now that now that now that's a big difference, and you know not every game is for every player, but that's huge. So Lynn is giving it a nine, saying it's a high nine, could have been a ten, except that there's no replayability on each of the adventures, and once you run out of adventures, you can't play it again. Now, I only gave it a four. So tell me, what made you go so much higher than my rating to, to give it a nine? What what do you love about this game? Um. I love that it reminded me of the click point adventures mm, the on the computer game. um yeah the like old zork ones and king's quest but it was you know kind of board not really even a board game just game non-video game form mm, okay of that and you were a big fan of those old ones like zork grand inquisitor you yes. love those games okay what else what other things do you like about it um i really like the um the newspapers and how you can find clues in the newspapers. I think that's really cool. I've never played a game with that had so much stuff that you can just go through and... Now, I, I agree that the newspapers are really well done components, and I do like them, but see now, I found them boring, but you love them. And then that's a perfect example of, of how opinions can just differ. So, so you love looking through the newspapers to, to search for clues? Yes. Now, but what about when someone else is doing it on their turn? Does that, do you not get bored, or do you look through a different newspaper, or what? I usually, um, I usually look through the directory, because mm. you really only look in the directory once you know where you want to go. Like, if someone is like, oh, I want to go to the taxi hub to see if any of the cabbies know something. Like, you don't need the directory if you're reading the newspaper. You need it once you decided you're going to go somewhere. So, I'll skim the directory and see if I haven't thought of any place to look. So, so you feel that you always do have stuff to look at? Yes. So you don't get bored in this game? No. Well, that, that's, I mean, that's an important and goes a long way to liking this game. But you don't just like this game, you love this game. Mm -hmm. So what are some other things that you really like about playing this game? I like Solomon Mysteries. Mm -hmm. um, I, like, I haven't read any Sherlock Holmes books, but I like the whole Victorian era. The Victorian London Sherlock Holmes yeah. world. Yes. Now... The, okay, wow. So you, you really do you really do love this game. Are you going to try this game one player? Or have you yet? I don't know. I haven't yet, but I, I do want to. I okay. think I can do better without you keeping me down. <laughs> well, okay, then. <laughs> uh, you're welcome to play it one player, because I'm, I'm not a, a big fan myself. But, uh, who would you recommend this game to and why? I would recommend it to anyone who liked Choose Your Own Adventure books when mm. they were a kid. Anyone who played any point-click adventure games, you know, even way back as the Apple II when there was no graphics, you just had to type in stuff. Um, because it's pretty much, it's a point-click adventure game in paper form. Hmm. Well, that, that is, that is uh, very interesting. So people who are into Sherlock Holmes, people who are into point-click adventure games, people who are into choose-your-own-adventure novels, I think that all this sounds really fun. Lynn says this game is for you. So, and that's why it's for her. These are the things that she really likes about it. So there you have it. So again, Lynn gave it 9 out of 10 stars. I only gave it 4 out of 10 stars. Big disagreement on this game. So it's going to be up to you to decide which one of us you think you agree with more. Now, have you played this game? Did I, did I get anything wrong? Is there anything extra you would like to point out? Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns? Feel free to comment down below. If you are a big fan of Sherlock Holmes and, and you have uh, anything you would like to point out about the Sherlock Holmes universe uh, that, that maybe 
might be pertain to this video, feel free to comment down below. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see us do more like it, please, please, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, game on.